In this video, we're going to update our app so that our player is actually a water bottle and that it drops from the top to the bottom of the screen. We'll be starting right where we left off in the last video. So this is what the app looks like currently. The first thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of organization to our files. So we can create a new folder here and we're gonna just call this the game. And then within this new game folder, we're gonna move the go green game up into the folder. And since this is the actual flame game, I'm just going to rename it to be the Go Green Game. Next, where we have our game app, I'm actually going to rename this now to just be the app. And that's because this is essentially just your app, like any other app would be in a Flutter project. And now within the game here, we're gonna create another new file and we're going to call this the Go Green World. And within this Go Green World, we're going to create a new world object and then we'll add that to our Go Green game. So by default, Flame Game will already have worlds, which we are using here. But instead of using the default world, we're gonna create our own world and then we'll start adding all our components to our custom world. And this is just going to allow us to separate things out a little bit better. It's not 100% necessary. You could continue to use this world. But as the game expands, this file for the game itself is going to continue to grow. So it's nice to just pull out the world into its own file. So with this Go Green world, we can create a new class. And it's going to extend from the world. And it's also going to have a game reference. We can use the has game ref here. And then we can also just tell it which kind of game this is going to have a reference to, which of course is going to be this go green game. And we can import that. Now what we're going to do is take this go green world and set it as the world in our game. And I just need to save that. But once that's saved, we can now remove these two players here. And we no longer need the on load currently in our game, so we can remove that as well. So our game right now is just extremely simple. And then back over in our world, we can override the on load and then add those two players. But since we will be adding these directly to this world, we don't need to call the world, we're just going to be loading them up onto this world object. And then we can import those and import the constants that we have as well as material. So if we save this, everything is going to operate the same way. It's just a little bit of a refactor that extracts out this world component. And basically now we will add all our components to the world instead of to the game directly. Now let's update our player so it is not just a circle. So I'm going to delete the second player and we're also going to remove all of these parameters and update our player to set the position within the player itself. So if we open up the player file, you can see this is kind of a simple circle component. So let's start by actually just deleting everything that's in here. And then instead of a circle component, we'll use a sprite component. And what this is going to allow us to do is set our player to be a image. Next, we'll override the on load. First, we can actually set the player's image, and this is going to be the sprite. So for this, we can just load up an image. So we can do sprite.load and then pass it an image. So we're going to need to add an image to our project here. So to add an image that Flame will use, add a new folder called assets, and then we actually want to add another folder in that called images. And this is important that you set it up this way because Flame itself is going to be looking in that assets images. And then within there, we can add an actual image. So this is what our player is going to look like. It's going to be a water bottle. And now in our pubspec.yaml, down at the bottom, find where you have the flutter. And then under here, we're going to set the assets and we will set the assets for that image folder entirely. So any images that are put in that image folder will now be accessible. Oh, and there's a typo there, so it's spelled wrong, but we can save that. So back in our player sprite, we can load up the bottle and we will need to await this, which means this needs to be an async. Now we want to set the size of our player here, and this is going to be a vector two, so it's going to be the X and Y size, but both of these are going to be 100. So we can just use vector2.all. 
Next, we can set the position. And for right now, let's just set it to 0, 0. So it'll appear in the center of the screen. We can also set the anchor property to be centered as well. So if we rerun this now, we should see our water bottle appear there, which is our player. And this is happening through the world here. We can remove these unneeded imports and we're adding that player directly to the world. And then the world is of course linked up to our game, but our player position is being set in the player directly. So instead of having our bottle start in the center here, we actually want our bottle to start up at the top. So we can change this by modifying the position value here. We'll keep the X at zero because we want it in the center, but for the Y value, since we want it at the top, we know we have our game height and we actually want to divide that by two because we want it to be up here, which is half the height. And since we want it to be up, we will have to also use the negative value of this. So if we rerun that, you'll see the bottle is there, but half of it is getting clipped off. And that's just because our anchor position is center. We could either change this to be top center and then our bottle would be where we would expect, or we could instead add the size of the player right here, which would be the size of Y. And then we would actually also divide that by two because only half of it would be getting cut off. So if we kept this at center, it would work the same. And the last thing we can do here is also just have this bottle fall. So we can do that by overriding the update method here. And within this update now, we can just change what the position Y is. So we want this to continue to drop, so we can just increase this position Y. So we're going to define a new double, and this will be the new position Y. It will be equal to the current Y position plus some value. And for this value, we're actually going to be using this DT which if you read this a little bit, it is the time, the delta time that is happening with the update. So you could think of this somewhat as a counter. If it's counting one, two, three, four, then you're going to want to increase our Y by the value of that time times some constant value. So for this, we can do 400. And then lastly, we can just take that position Y and set it equal to this new Y. And if you save that, it is going to have the bottle drop down directly. And again, this is working because this DT is always increasing. And if you want this to move slower, you can just decrease this value or to move faster, you could increase it. But I will leave it at the 400. You'll notice that the bottle will just drop right off the screen. And we can actually prevent this by checking that the new position is within the bounds of our screen. So we're going to be checking if the new Y is greater than the current game height. And again, we can use this game height, but I also want to show you if you don't have this game height constant set up, you can also use the game ref. So within our sprite component here, we can add the game reference by using with and then has game ref and then we would just pass it our go green game. So now that we have that game reference, we can use it in here and we need to determine what that point is down here. So that is going to be the size of our Y value of our game divided by two since the start is right in the center. So we can do that with the game ref and then call size and then Y. And then we're going to divide this by two. So it will get us half of our screen. And then similar to what we did up here with the size of the actual sprite divided by two, we're going to have to subtract that over here so that the sprite can actually sit on the top of the screen. And this actually moved that into our if statement, but we want to keep that outside the if statement. And then if this is actually true, meaning that our new Y position is off the screen. We just want to set the new Y position equal to actually this value right here, which is going to be the bottom of our screen. So if we save and rerun this, we would expect this to just stop once it gets to the bottom here. And that is exactly what happens. So that's going to be it for this video. Now we have our player and our player is dropping down the screen. In the next video, we'll talk about moving the sprite left and right using both our gesture detector and our keyboard. So if you'd like to see that, then you can go ahead and subscribe and check out the playlist, which I will link at the end of this video.